When I first started the ministry here, uh, I was in a lot of pain. And I don't know what it was from. It was gout that had went to every joint of my body, practically. And uh, every joint was swollen, red, uh, couldn't hardly walk. In fact, they used crutches. And I remember every time that I got behind this pulpit, I put the crutches down, pay the pain left. And I was able to preach. After I got done preaching, though, I had to use the crutches again because I was back in pain to get back down. I remember that at the apartments where I was at Mount Baker, uh, it was three flights of stairs to get to my apartment. Now I was in a lot of pain. So I started to try to get up and practically was pulling and crawling practically all the way up to the apartment. I knew that I was exhausted, that I couldn't actually, the pain was more than I could take. And I knew that if I sat down in the chair that I was going for, I probably wasn't going to get back up because I was in so much pain. And I know that at that moment, I prayed to God and I said, God, I, I just can't take it anymore. You've got to heal me. And immediately, as I breathed out my breath, the pain went with my breath out. And I, all of a sudden, I knew that God was going to heal me completely. Within three days, I could run around the block, literally. No pain. And I know that God can heal. I see him work. I know what he can do. Marvin Spriggs gave me a call. He used to come here a long time ago. He was telling me how someone from the Nazarene church told him that the church here was for sale. And he asked him how much, and he said $10,000. Well, he had a farm that he went and sold, I think, in Kansas. And he went and paid the $10,000. He was telling me about it. Of course, I didn't want to tell him how much more money was put into the church besides the ten. But I let him feel like he had something that he started. And then we started talking about miracles of God. And I told him, I wanted him to know that we have miracles here. And uh, I told him about my dad when we were driving that old Model A. And you know, the, it had the, the gas that it showed had the bubble where it went back and forth on a dial, how much you had. And uh, when it got to, when we were traveling back to take the Model A to my sister who was in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, going to college. She didn't have a vehicle. So my dad said, well, we're going to drive this back there so she can have it. <laughs> and uh, going 45 miles an hour to 50 max, all the way there. But we came to a place while we were driving that there was no gas stations open. It was too late. They were all closing up. And we were still in the middle of kind of like a desert area, very dangerous area, my dad looked at me and said, well, we, we don't want to run out of gas here. And we were trying to get gas, but every time we came to where the gas was, it was closed up. So, he looked at me and he said, son, <laughs> we're going to have to pray that God keep, is able to keep us going with the gas that we have until we reach a gas station that's open. It says, we don't want to be caught out here, it's too dangerous. So we, we prayed and where that gasoline, where that dial, you know you had a little bit of gas if it was moving. But what happened, the further we drove, it quit moving. There was no more gas, it wasn't shaking in the tank or anything, the dial became zero. 
and we drove, and we drove for at least over a hundred some miles. And finally we came to a gas station that was open. And as we were pulling in, it ran out of gas. And we were able to fill it. We praised God and thanked Him for what He did for it because that was a miracle. And that's why I have the faith, knowing what God can do. Because when I was young, I see what the miracles of God. And that's how you treat your children. They see that you put your trust and faith in God, and they see that what God can do for you, and you let them know what God has done with the testimony of your life of keeping Jesus first. They're going to start following Jesus, keeping His commandments and doing His will when they're young. Today, we want to talk about captivity of the righteous will always be favored of God. Israel, actually the tribe of Judah, and uh, had come to where Nebuchadnezzar, the, tri the tribe of Judah, the king of Judah, was so bad that God just let it go and be put in captivity. And it was put, put in by captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. We're going to read a little bit about that today. And we're going to read about children who are taught by their parents to put their faith and trust in God. To such they would adhere to it, even when they're not with their parents. They're going to put their trust in God. Second Kings 24, 1 Kings 24.1, it says, In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up. And Jehoiakim, this is the king that was no good, king of Judah, became his servant three years, then he turned and rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees, bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it. I wonder if anybody would give him money to the Jews then, that they were going to be blessed when God was destroying Judah. No, probably God would destroy them also. Because why? They're going against the will of God. When someone goes against God's will, they're going to be chastised. That's what happens. The king, is, the king in charge did everything against God. So God put him in captivity. Says, surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah to remove them out of his sight. For the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did, and also for the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. Judah is now full captivity of King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel 1.1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it with all those other armies that was mentioned. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. <laughs> gave him right to Nebuchadnezzar. Why? Because he went against the commandments of God with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. It says, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, 
that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. What type of children would they be? Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge and understanding and science, and such as had ability to them to stand in the king's palace, of whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. They didn't want anyone who played around and didn't want to go to school, didn't want to learn, didn't obey their parents. Because if they didn't obey the parents who trusted in God, they're not going to trust in God. But you can always tell when a child trusts in God because they obey their parents. And if they're obeying their parents, God's going to help them learn. He's going to give them wisdom and going to give them knowledge. Always. It always happens that way. So even though Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, did evil in the sight of God, there were parents who still followed the commandments of God and taught their children the commandments of God. These children who obeyed their parents had learned to keep the commandments of God and put their faith in God. Teaching at home is very important. You have to teach them at home about God, to trust in God. When children put their faith in God, they will obey their parents. Number one. When children will finally put their trust in God, they will always obey their parents. There's no other way of it happening. It doesn't happen any other way. That's the way it always is. When they finally put their trust in God, they will always obey their parents. And because of that, they easily study and learn what they are being taught. Because why? God will help them. See, when you keep the commandments of God, it's obeying your parents the commandments of God. It sure is. And when you keep, it says, the commandments of God and do His will, ask what you please and He will help you. God will help them to excel when they obey their parents and when they ask God to help them learn. See, now that they're keeping the commandments and keeping doing what God's will is, God now is going to help them with their wisdom and knowledge. All they have to do is pray and ask. God's going to help them. They're going to excel above everyone else in wisdom and knowledge in their school. Did you know that? They absolutely will. There's no question to it. They will excel if they keep God's commandment, honor thy father and thy mother, and keep their faith in God. Daniel 1 5, and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs actually changed their names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, <laughs> And unto Hananiah of Shadrach, and unto Mishael of Meshach, and unto Azariah of Abednego. So he changed their names. I wonder if they said, no, we're not going to take those names. Do you think that they rebelled? Well, they probably would have if they hadn't obeyed their parents when they were younger. 
and they probably then would have been killed because of stupidity, never learning to obey. When you don't learn to obey, you're going to be first to get in trouble when you get an open. It's the way it happens. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. So what is he going to do if he's not going to defile himself? Is he going to go ahead and scream and yell and say, I'm not going to do it? I'm not going to obey what you say? Nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So was Daniel eating the meat and drinking the wine? I'm sorry, but he was. That's what it says. He was eating the meat. And he was drinking. Why? Because he was not going against authority. He learned to obey his parents. Says he didn't want to defile himself with the porch of the king's meat, no, with the wine which he drank. So he was. But he was looking for a way not to keep doing it. And I'm sure he prayed to God and asked for knowledge and wisdom, which God would give him. Why? Because when you obey God's commandments and do his will, he'll answer your prayer. Real simple. He will answer your prayer. So Daniel did not defy the orders of the king, but put in a request. Did you hear that? He put in a request. He didn't defy. He put in a request. He already was eating meat and drinking the wine. He just didn't want to keep defiling himself. So he put in a request because he knew that it just wasn't right with God what was happening, even though he was under authority. But God would blame him because of being forced by authority. Did you know that? But for you not to try to find a way out, God would blame you. Matthew 10, 16, Behold, I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. I'm sure that's what Daniel prayed for. Oh Lord, give me the wisdom. What, to, what can I say? What can I tell him so that we can continue not to eat and defile ourselves with the meat and the wine? Now God had brought Daniel into favor. Huh. Wow, because he did defy, but he was doing everything he was supposed to do, being told by the eunuch, he found favor. He wasn't trying to be someone that defied it. The eunuch knew that he was a good person and he would do what needed to be done was told to. Why? Because he learned to obey his parents. Because children obey the commandments of God and have faith in God, God will always protect and they will receive favor from those who are masters above them. Always. This is not maybe. It is always for children who will keep the commandments of God and do His will. They can ask what they will and receive of God. You can achieve your learning, your skills, and you can be on top. Why will God make you on top of the class? Because you're keeping His commandments and doing His will. He wants the light of Jesus to shine. Then He wants everyone to know you're smart because you trust in God. He wants you smarter than the devil's children. 
who don't know Jesus, he wants you to shine. He wants you to be the head, not the tail. But you have to keep his commandments and do his will. And the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, I fear the Lord the king who has appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse, lacking than the children which are of your sort? Then ye shall make me endanger my head to the king. So now the eunuch is make tell Daniel what would happen. So then Daniel said to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had sent over Daniel, Hananiah, and Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants. See, when you keep God's commandment and you do his will, did you know you can prove God? And people around you can prove what you say because you are keeping the commandments of God and doing his will. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. When you have faith in God, God will bless. In Psalm 37, 18 it says, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Always. God's going to take care of you if you keep his commandments and do his will. God will protect you. You will achieve far beyond anyone in your class. Always be an achiever. Always. This is not maybe. This is always. Then let our countenance be looked upon before in the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So now Daniel said, okay, let's just test it for ten days. And if there, if I, we look worse, then the other twelve, I'll continue eating the meat and drinking your wine. And remember, he was eating the meat and drinking the wine. And he could not not do, do eat, eat the meat and drink the wine until this test was over. Wow. But he knew that God didn't want him to do it. But God wasn't blaming him because his master made him do it. But God will find a way if you pray to God so that you come out shining the light. So you become an achiever. God will bless you when you try to keep his commandments and do his will. So he consented to them in this manner and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, your countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. That Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink. See, he took it away now because they were eating it and drinking it. But now they proved God. And God, through the test, was proving them. And now the blessings, because of going through that test, is going to come to these who keep the commandments of God and put it first. That Melzar took away the portion of their meat and wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. 
And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Why didn't he? Because he was the older of the others. And he had stood up and made the request. Did he get blessed more than the other? Yes, he did. Why? <laughs> Standing up for Jesus. Keeping the commandments and doing his will. You will prosper. Prove him and see. This is not if or maybe. This is a fact of life that God has proven to everyone. Telling them, keep my, my commandments and do my will. You can ask what you will. Now at the end of the day that the king had said, that's over three years that they were eating that. They brought him in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none of all the ones of all the children that they got from all over the place that didn't have any blemishes, that were skilled, had good understanding and knowledge who could learn the, the language of Nebuchadnezzar, the Chaldean. <laughs> but who, who achieved? You said, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better. Do you want to be an achiever in your school? Put God first in your life. Keep his commandments. Obey your parents. And do his will. Pray to God. Ask him for help in things that are going through in your life. And he will help you. He will find a way. He's going to make you an achiever better than all the rest. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of the king of Cyrus. Well, actually, it continued further than that. When you read in the Bible, Says, so this Daniel prospered in the reign of the, uh, Darius and the reign of Cyrus and the Persian. When you put God first in your life and God's commandments and do his will, God will always raise you up before this world to shine the light of Jesus that all may be saved. Do you know that the stand that Daniel and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego took Saved Nebuchadnezzar? It saved him. Even the king of Cyrus went down uh, the lion's den. And he prayed and he knew that Daniel's God was a God. And when he seen it, he made a rule <laughs> that no one could talk down Daniel's God. When we stand up for Jesus, Shine the light. Don't be as churches who are scared to talk about the wrong that's in this world. Abortions. Gays. Don't be of the churches that won't preach against it anymore. When you stand up for Jesus, you want to see the world change? You have to shine the light. The only way to shine the light is to keep the commandments of God and do his will.